Time once again for a special update from the city of New Hope. Mayor Kathy Hempkin is with us to tell us a number of things that are happening in the city. Welcome, Mayor. How are you today? Fine, thanks. It's nice to see you, even if it's virtual. Yes, you as well. <laughs> Let's get right to some of the things happening in the city, and one involves a railroad crossing. Tell us about Winnetka Avenue and what people can expect happening there. Oh, man, we've been working on this for so long. If you think city government's slow, the railroad is really slow. <laughs> So 51st and Winnetka, that railroad crossing is in bad, bad need of repair. So we finally signed a contract with Hennepin County to repair the sidewalk and the culvert that's there. And we're in the process of signing a contract with Canadian Railroad to get the tracks replaced. That's the good news. The bad news is it's going to happen in 2022. So it takes forever, but we're working on it and it's going to happen. But please just slow down as you're crossing that railroad crossing still. Good advice. Let's talk about elections coming up. A lot going on with the elections, including some locations for voting and also the need for judges. Give us a little election overview, if you would. Well, you know, because the schools have been closed and we do a lot of our elections in the schools, um, that hasn't been able to happen. But Meadow Lake, Sunny, Sunny Hollow, and RSI have agreed to let us come into the schools to do both the uh, primary and the general election. So that's really good news. However, Northridge used to be a polling place. Uh, that's a nursing home, and we're not, we're not able to go in there. So those people in Precinct 6 will have to go to the Civic Center uh, conference room at City Hall okay. and vote there. But they'll, they'll still get to vote. So we're looking for election judges. Um, they should call that number that's on the screen and tell them they want to be an election judge. It seems like a long ways away, but... Quite frankly, it takes a long time to get them trained and get them on board. We don't need any for the primary, but we do need them for the general in November. All right. And they're paying eleven fifty an hour. And so it's a one day gig. You can work as few or as many hours as you want that day. And we're looking for judges. Very good. Call that phone number and get that information. Let's talk West Metro Fire Rescue District and something that residents might not be aware of is the need for duty crews during this time. Explain what duty crews are and tell us a little bit about what the council and the city is looking at right now with these crews. Well, we have a, a pay on call fire department. So when there's a fire or an incident, a call goes out, they get it on the radios and they all show up to the fire station and the first, however many they need, uh, get sent out of the fire, the rest go home. Well, uh, the fire chief was really nervous about uh, bringing the virus into the fire station. If that spreads to the fire station, we don't have a fire department. We've got a problem. So she came up with this idea of a duty crew. So there's four uh, firefighters on duty, 12 hour days. There's one uh, night, one day at the three stations. And these guys are pretty protected. Guys, gals are pretty protected. And that's called a duty crew. Well, of course, with a duty crew, it's expensive. And so this has been going on for a couple months. They're hoping to be done with it by the end of July. And how they're going to determine that, we have to have 14 days of decline of the infection. And once we have that 14 days, they will, be, they will make the determination that we no longer need a duty crew. So it's kind of a long explanation, but I think people need to know that there is somebody there and it's, it's costly to have them there all the time. But I think it's necessary at this time. One other point related to COVID-19, we wanted to talk a little bit about the city's preparedness plan. So again, explain if you could, what is a preparedness plan and is that now in place for the city? Well, we got the directions from the state to, to do a preparedness plan before we brought employees back in. In the meantime, before that, like about three weeks ago, we had the plan in place and we started bringing employees back uh, we had to tweak the plan just a little bit, but basically our city hall is open. They're putting up shields for the people, the main desks, um, and we'll tweak that and, and we'll continue to be open. Very good. Let's talk a little bit about the farmer's market. Some things happening in community development. One, the market is getting ready to open up. We have an email for people that might be interested in being a vendor. You'll see that at the bottom of the screen. But tell us a little bit about the fun that's had at the market and why people should attend. Well, it's opening on the 20th of June, 9 to 1. Uh, we're asking people to please wear masks. The vendors will have masks on. And if the people coming will wear a mask, that will be very helpful. We'll have an entrance, a separate entrance and a separate exit, so we can control the traffic coming into the market. It's going to be in the parking lot at City Hall. 
So we'll be set back a little ways. Not a lot of vegetables, but for sure, uh, we'll have books to give out to the kids again this year. Hopefully the donut guy is going to be there so we can get many donuts to eat with your books. <laughs> that sounds good to me. We'll take that. Speaking of food, let's talk a little bit about Hennepin Recycling Group and Organics Recycling. This is a new program. Tell us what people should be thinking about as this comes closer. Well, Hennepin County has put out a, a, a eat it, if you will, that we have to have organic recycling. And so we're giving a notice out to the garbage haulers that they have to start, they have to offer this. Uh, this won't happen until January of 2022, again, mm -hmm how quickly your city works, but it takes a while for them to, to get that ready. But this is something that the county is telling Very us. Very good. Let's update people on the Scattered Site Housing Program. Again, always a very successful program in the city. You have three properties, Mayor, you want to give us an update on. What is the well, latest? Well, 4215 Louisiana, that's a, the house, it's sort of a house, right behind Cook Automotive off of 42nd. So that, we bought that house, we're gonna tear it down. It, it hasn't been used for quite a while as a house. Um, Cook Automotive has asked that we take out the big light fixture in the front of their building. Uh, that's coming down too, it'll make the property a little more uh, saleable once we get that down. Uh, the 5355, we just issued Oregon. We just issued a building permit, so they'll start building that. Great buy builders are doing that. They're figuring on a $360,000 home on that one. And on the West Broadway, the 6027 West Broadway, that house is down. They're pouring the footings. Uh, a nice new house is going to go up in its place. Hopefully, we'll have that by the end of the summer. Very good. Let's talk businesses in the city, and they have a great way to get together and talk about what's happening in the business community, and certainly a lot to talk about right now, Mayor. What is the group that meets? When do they meet? And how can people get involved? So we have a business networking group meets twice a month, uh, the second, the second Wednesday, and the third Wednesday. No, the second and fourth. No, first and third Wednesdays. I'm sorry. Uh, the first one is at eight thirty in the morning. The other one is at two thirty in the afternoon. It's going to be a, a WebEx call. If you are, if you don't get a notice from the city that says how to get onto that, you can call and be part of that. It's, it usually lasts about an hour. A lot of good information for the small businesses. Really important that people get in on that and listen to that. And again, the New Hope uh, website has information about when those meetings are and when they, where they are taking place. Infrastructure projects, we've been talking about some roadways in town that have been receiving a little attention. What is the update on the progress of that work? A little, little attention, that's, a, <laughs> that's an understatement. <laughs> okay, a lot. <laughs> 36 and a half is just about ready to be paved. So that should be done in a, or a North Third Park, still a mess. They, they had a little trip with the sewer line and the main water line on Boone, and they had to redo that. So that is a major redoing. They're still having a, a gigantic mess there, and it's still gravel. Uh, they're doing some mill and overlay. Erickson Parkway is one of them. And they're also doing a bunch of our trails where they're re redoing them to fix them up. So lots of work on, on street work. Yes, very busy, as is the Park and Rec Department. Let's talk about a few of the things happening there. And as is the season, we have some happening virtually and now some happening in person. Give us a little laundry list of what's up. Well, they're, they're hoping to do a lot of programs virtually starting in July. So the kids can go onto their iPads or their whatever they're using, their tablets. And, and have a little program that way. But they're also starting to do some, come the 6th of July, they'll start doing some in-person. So things like the dance program, they're gonna start practicing at the ice arena in-person. Uh, some of the playground equipment they'll be doing in-person. So go on the website, look at Park and Rec, look at what they are doing. The youth baseball, they're still trying to work out how that's going to happen. They haven't quite come up with a good plan for that. However, the adult softball, they're scheduling that. They're hoping that that'll be on the uh, 6th of July. They can start the season. The ice arena is open. They're doing some training there. Uh, the kids are on the ice. So, but again, they're practicing social distancing. So they're not getting a lot, a lot of time in, but they're getting some time in. Okay. How about the golf course? How are things at the golf course? What has changed since the last time we talked? 
Well, they're, they're opening up the inside so that you can get concessions now. You can if you want to sit inside, but who would want to with that beautiful patio outside? A lot of people are playing their round of golf, sitting on the patio, distancing from themselves, having something to, to drink and just, uh, just chatting. I think people are missing that, that contact with other people. So that's been working out real well. Excellent. And finally, we want to talk just about a couple parks within the city. There are still some thoughts about the park usage for the city. Give us a little update on a few of them. Well, the parks are open to the kids, but we're not sanitizing them. So please use them as, at your own discretion. If the kids are going to go to the park, kind of wipe the kids down afterwards. Uh, they're working on Bayesian Park to get those, um, that equipment in in Northwood Park. The basketball hoops, only one of them is up, so that they can't have a lot of people at the basketball courts, but there's some there, there now. We're trying. All right. I We're know trying. there is certainly a lot. And quickly, a swimming pool update. Progress continuing there and right across the parking lot, also at the City Hall building and some landscaping. What is the latest there? Well, I just heard that the Crystal Pool is also closing for the summer, so there just won't be any pools open this summer, I'm afraid. They're pouring cement like crazy over there. They actually uh, did a leak test on the current channel and the uh, vortex pool, and there were no leaks, so that went good. Uh, they filled up the 50-meter pool so that they could cure the plaster. It's a 28-day process. Who knew it would take 28 days to cure right. plaster in a pool, but that's what they're doing. Just because the water's in there does not mean the pool is open. So they will do that, make sure that everything is cured, and they'll get that out. They continue to work on that pool area, putting in landscaping. The landscaping is going in around City Hall. That's just about ready. Uh, the trees are in, the plants are in, but you know, it all, takes, it all takes time. We're getting there. It does indeed. You have an opportunity for the public to give you some response through a survey. Tell me where people should be looking for the survey and why responding is so important for the city. The survey sends out, we were gonna do a Morris Letterman survey where they survey a professional team does that and thought this was not the best time to do that. So we'll be sending out a survey with the, with the pipeline that's going out in July. Uh, we asked people to fill that in and, and send it in. They can put it in our little drop box. I believe they can still go online and, and do the survey. The reason we do that, we wanna know what we're doing right. We wanna do what we're doing wrong. We wanna know how happy or unhappy people are and what we can do to make things better. So, it's really important that we fill that out. And just to let people know, you said it's in the pipeline. And is that through the city's utility bill mailing? Is that correct? Yes, it is. Okay, yep. very good. Final note we want to just touch on and remind people again that you are always talking to the school district. Tell us a little bit about any updates from 281. Well, 281 has been having uh, twice a month meetings uh, with all of the seven cities and either their city managers or their mayors. And just to tell us how they're doing, there's, they have been serving meals to the kids during the school year. Um, they're going to continue that if they can. This is a very expensive process. Uh, the schools are financially hurting, quite frankly. But they're, they're doing what they can. They don't know about how school is going to start. Um, most of the classrooms have 20 kids in them now. With six feet distance, they can't put those 20 kids in. Mm -hmm. So they're talking about ways to, to do this. Maybe the kids could go three days a week. Some kids go two and then the next week change off so they can put 12 in the classroom and get them distance. They're going to be using the gyms um, again to social distance the kids as best they can. There's all kinds of things in the works. They're not just sitting around doing nothing. They're trying to figure out how they can do this and the best way to do this and, and working on the programming for the, the kids when the school is supposed to start. I can't even imagine all the planning that is having to be done there. Well, just, just busing is a problem. Oh, I can if imagine. Sure. If the kids are only coming in three days a week, you've got to have a different system and you can't fill the bus mm -hmm. because of social distancing. So that's a problem. We, there's just many things they're working on that I had never even thought of. They're busy scrambling and I think they'll be fine, but they're, they're working on it. Very good. Well, great to get the updates from you to pass that along to the residents. A lot of information today. Pass along from the mayor. If you want more on some of the topics we've touched on, go to the city's website, newhopemn.gov. Mayor Hempkin, thanks again for your time, and we look forward to talking to you again soon. See you next week, Dave. Okay.
Bye bye. Learn more about the connection at ccxmedia.org and follow us on social media.